welcome to the channel. If you are new, thank you for joining me. If you're returning, welcome back. As always, if you like the content, please don't forget to like. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll always know when I'm uploading a new video. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to create your own notebook or specifically how I create my notebooks. Um, there are lots of different ways to do it, lots of different styles, and we'll get into some of that as we go through the video. But first, I wanna talk about why you should bind your own notebooks. Notebooks are expensive, especially good quality notebooks. Um, Particularly if you want to use specialty paper or if you want quality paper, if you want quality covers. Now there are some benefits to just buying a notebook. For instance, if you buy like a leather uh, notebook or something like that, it's going to be harder to recreate that hardbound notebooks if that's your preference. I mean, you can make those as well. I can't exactly explain how to do that, but if you're doing something that is a little simpler and a little less complicated it's always going to be cheaper because you can buy the binding system up front and then make as many notebooks as you want to whenever you want to and you can customize each notebook based on your needs and what you want and once i got into grad school i invested into my own binding system so that i could make them specifically for myself and customize them however i wanted to and that's what i'm going to show you today so the first thing we're gonna get into is the binding system because that's important. Um, I've seen some people who have like all the binding systems and that's great and I would love to be on that level, but the way my finances are set up, I am not on that level. So I had to pick strategically which binding system would work best for me. And likely you will have to do the same thing. So there are disc bound binding systems. I don't have an example to show you, I, I wish I did. But if you're familiar with like the Happy Planner brand and stuff like that, that is the disc bound system. And so there's a specific machine you use to bind that. And um, there are the specific little discs that you buy. And I think they have different sizes and different colors. Um, and you, you would be buying those kinds of supplies if that's the style of binding that you want. And of course there are pros and cons to each thing. Um, there are lots of websites you can look up for the pros and cons of each type. I'm just giving you kind of an overview um, for something food for thought before you decide what kind of binding system you want. Another type of binding system is the, of course, spiral bound. That is what I use. Um, and I briefly explained this in other videos. I prefer spiral bind uh, bound notebooks just because I like that they always lay flat when you open them and that you can double the book back over on itself like so. Um, and that's why I use the spiral bound uh, notebooks. There is also another form of spiral bound that is a little bit sturdier. Um, I did not make this notebook. I, this is a purchase notebook. Um, but there is the double spiral bound. It, you, they usually have this little square punch um, but you can also buy punches for this and you can buy these types of coils and then you can make this style of notebook uh, to my knowledge I think these are actually stronger they're usually metal whereas the other spirals can be plastic um, and so I don't really have a preference between the two I just ended up buying that one because that's what it was but you can also buy this type if this is how you want to bind your notebooks um, and then of course, there is the very popular comb bound, bound notebook. This is actually a notebook that I bound when I was in like high school. Um, as you can tell, it, I mean, it's just basic paper. It's not like fancy, but um, the comb binding looks like this um, and it has this straight spine. It does sit flat, but it is very difficult to flip it over. I mean, you can, but it doesn't, it doesn't like flatten out here. And so I typically do not like comb bound things, um, but it's, um, you, it is a binding system you can buy. And it is also um, one that you can get done at, you know, your local Staples or FedEx or something like that. So those are uh, some of the major styles. There are a couple of others. There is the heat shrink that I mentioned. I don't have an example of that handy with me. Um, but it looks kind of like like a magazine like this where you get like a nice clean thing 
here um and it just kind of sucks together so that i think that it uses like a glue or something um they don't sit flat and they don't you know bend over on themselves so i didn't really look into that and like i said i can't find the notebook that i have that's like that but those are some of the different types of binding systems that are available so one of the customizations that you gain from the building your own notebook is the type of paper that you use now on the one hand the type of paper could mean the color of the paper the patterns of the paper um, you can do wild and unusual things in your notebook based on the purpose of your notebook but you also get to choose the thickness and the weight of your notebook and so when you buy paper um, there is standard printer paper it's fairly thin if you hold it up you can see through it and depending on what kind of um, markers pens paints whatever you put on it will I mean, it may just kind of fall apart, to be honest. It's not very sturdy for that. It's made for basic printing, uh, essentially. Um, but you can buy thicker paper as well. Most people are familiar with cardstock. You can buy things that are in between the regular printer paper and cardstock. You can buy things that are a little thicker than your average cardstock. And based on what you want to do with your notebook, it should determine what kind of paper you buy because you may want to put paint in your notebook, you should probably get thicker paper. And if you're gonna use markers or something like that, you don't wanna get bleed through. And so one of the things that I found is when I use the regular printer paper, I get ghosting really bad, um, but I also get bleed through. And ghosting you may have with any type of paper. The final paper that I settled on is actually 65 pound paper. It's cl closer to cardstock. Um, I do get some ghosting in my notebooks, but I never get bleed through, which is what I really look to avoid. Um, so my preferred paper is 65 pound cardstock. I use markers a little bit. Um, the heaviest things that I use are the silver and gold shadow uh, jelly roll pens. They have a tendency to bleed through on regular printer paper. Um, I also use the Tombow dual brush pens. They have a tendency to go through on regular paper as well. Um, and occasionally I use markers. So those are probably the heaviest things that I put in my notebooks. If you're using paint, you may want to go up to like a hundred pound paper. I'm not really sure because I don't use paint in my notebooks. But that's the first step you want to do is figure out what type of paper that you want to use. And then you want to start processing that paper for your notebook. Now, I like dot grid notebooks. The dots help me to write straight. They help me to draw my lines straight and all things like that. They help me to be organized with my indenting and stuff like that. So I found this website that allows me to make custom dot grid paper. You can alter the spacing of the dots. You can choose the paper size, and then it generates a PDF that you can print and save to your computer. And then you can just print it off on a printer. I have a specialty printer um, that uses the toner where basically it never runs out of ink. I bought it because I do this often. Uh, if you don't have that, you can always go to like a FedEx or a Staples and have it printed there. I'm not really sure about the prices, but you're gonna be printing black and white, so it shouldn't be too very expensive. Um, but like I said, if you're going to do this a lot, then you would just invest in a nice printer that will give you the most bang for your buck. Um, of course, if you like plain paper, you can use plain paper. I have made uh, notebooks with lined paper before and you can also buy that online. And you can also buy lined paper that's not punched. I That was a struggle to find, but it is possible. Um, and so basically whatever type of paper you want, you need to process that before you start making your notebook decide on it if you're printing out things print it out and then you can get ready for the real work okay so let's dive into making the notebook you have your stack of paper how it whatever color whatever printing you want it to do and then you just hole punch it like you would a normal three hole punch um, this particular machine has a page limit of i think 10 sheets per punch 
but that is for regular printer paper. So because my paper is thicker, it's slightly less than that. So I have to take little tiny stacks and do the punching. Um, there's also a little tab at the bottom of the machine. I unfortunately didn't catch that on camera, but it helps you line up the pages so that you can punch the holes in exactly the same page on each piece of paper. That is extremely important because you want your holes to line up when you start to bind it. Trust me, you want to utilize that feature. And so you just punch each sheet and you get a nice little stack of punched paper. This took me about 10 minutes. Once you do that, you want to get ready for your cover. I picked out these particular papers that I had. I had just a stack of pretty paper. I thought this looked cool. And so I figured I would cut this to the size that I needed and use it to make my covers. And then I usually um, glue the pretty paper to chipboard. Chipboard is a thicker type of paper than cardstock. It's almost like cardboard. This is what's typically on your notebooks when you buy a normal spiral bound notebook. It gives it that rigidity um, and makes it closer to like a hard cover. So I like to use that. Um, I use my cutting board to kind of line them up and just cut the right sizes. Um, you, you know, when you have 12 by 12 paper versus eight and a half by 11 paper, you want to make sure that you're getting the pieces of the image that you really like. Originally, I was going to stick it to one side and then just cut around it so that I didn't have to make as many cuts. Um, but I wanted the that middle island with the water around it. So I, I didn't want to cut it in a corner. And I noticed that this other sheet that matched it, which will be my back cover, had a little bit of a uh, blemish in one corner. And so I wanted to cut them so that I got rid of the blemish but I was utilizing both the water and the land for you know the aesthetic of the paper. So I basically spent some time kind of playing around with it, figuring out you know what angle I should cut it from. And then eventually I decided that since I was gonna throw away the scrap paper, it was okay for me to just mark it with a pin where I wanted to cut it. Um, and then I'll use that marking to line it up with the cutter when it's time to cut the paper. up a little um, and my cutting board is not as sharp as it should be you should replace the blades often I did not I need to put that on my to-do list so I ended up reverting to scissors to get the super close um, edge that was not lined up properly um, you can always take out your scissors to do that or to clean up anything that you missed and once I do that I prepare to laminate the front so I used peel and stick for this particular notebook you can also use pouches and use a laminating machine in this case my um, covers are too thick to go through my laminating machine that's why I used the peel and stick and I decided to only laminate the front I'm not really sure what possessed me to make that decision but that's the decision I made um, as always you could use four and you could laminate both the front and the back it would work essentially the same way as a laminating machine. So what I did for the first cover is I just peeled back a little bit of it and then stuck it that way um, for an anchor and then I pull and smooth it as I go. 
For this particular cover, I didn't line up anything because the sheet is larger than the piece of paper. So it really didn't matter because I knew I was going to cut off the excess so that there's not overhang on the notebook. So I didn't try to line anything up or make it pretty. Um, but that also meant that I had to go back to the cutting board, which, like I said, needs a new blade. Um, and I had to um, cut off the excess. Um, I did regret right here not leaving a little bit of the film on it because it was sticky and sticking to the cutting board. But overall, it's a pretty painless process. Um, if you don't line it up with any corner, then you just have to make a few more cuts to get rid of the excess. And, um, you know, if you are binding it on both sides, you could stick it straight in the center and use the binding on the other side to um, clear or to, to catch any of the stickiness. Um, that's what I usually do. And, um, you know, depending on if you like having the cover slightly larger than your pages, you could leave some of the overhang um, to give that effect. I like it to be all the same um, size and nice and flush. So I cut off all of the excess uh, laminating film tape I'm not sure what to call that laminating thing so that gave me my first cover now for the second cover I'm gonna do pretty much the exact same thing but for this one I wanted to show you how you can actually line it up to make it easier for yourself so that you don't have to make cuts on every single side of the paper or the cover so I peel back parts of it. It was a little hard for me to get started, but then I carefully lined it up. It's a little hard to see because my head got in the way, but um, I lined it up to a particular corner and then I started pulling it kind of diagonally instead of horizontally and lined things up that way. Um, and of course you always want to keep going over it to smooth it to make sure that you don't get bubbles um, because you're not going to be able to rip this back up once it starts sticking to the paper. And again, guys, I'm sorry that my head is in the way. Um, this part, this way took way more concentration for me than just um, letting the overhang happen because you have to make sure that you're actually going straight and that it's staying on the page, that it's not like becoming crooked. And so you have like, parts of it that are not laminated or or something like that um, or you have like a tiny bit of overhang that you're not going to be able to cut off but eventually I managed to get it straight and now you only have to make the two cuts on those sides personally um, I prefer the first method because I don't have to think so hard and I feel like it's less prone to mistakes up front you just have to do more work in trimming in the back end but if you don't like the trimming part, if for some reason the trimming part is the part that gives you nightmares and is where you make the most mistakes or something, then I suggest doing it the second way so that you make less cuts. And as you can see, um, I was kind of utilizing both of the cutters on there trying to get it to cut um, because I need to replace my cutter. Yeah. So that is the way that I make my covers. Okay, so after you have everything neatly stacked together, you can start the binding process with your coil. So I have this um, heavy duty coil and I find the beginning of the coil to start threading it through the holes that I have punched. Now this first hole is going to be the hardest one to get right. It is such a pain. This is the part I hate the most about the entire process of creating a notebook. Even though you have the holes punched perfectly in the same place on each page, the pages are not gonna line up perfectly if you manually stack them. This is why they have machines and things like this in big print shops. And as you try to slide it in, the pages are going to start to slide and move out from under you. So you really have to be patient and um, keep kind of realigning the pages and trying to coax this uh, coil into that first 
whole, you want to be really gentle because um, I've had a couple of times where I caused pages to rip, particularly when I used regular printer paper or um, actual like lined paper because it's thinner. And sometimes if the hole is not lined up correct, you'll hit like part of the hole and part of the uh, that little tiny piece between the hole and the edge of the paper. And it's not that strong. And if you're using a metal coil, it's kind of sharp. And um, I've just basically punctured a new hole and then it caused like a rip and I've lost the page that way. So I definitely encourage you to go slow and gently with this section uh, with this first hole you may have to section it off um, as you'll see um, i take like a little section that i can get um, threaded on there and then i'll go ahead and stick it out and then i will start again with the next side and like i said you just have to keep lining the pages together until you can get it threaded and once you get it through the entire notebook then it runs much more smoothly because that first rung is holding it in place and holding it together the second hole is i mean it's still a little wobbly but um it's much better than the first hole and then once you get through that first and second hole it's smooth sailing and you can just manually wind the coil through <laughs> So once you've got the coil all the way through, then it's time to clip off the excess. So you're gonna get some pliers um, that have a wire cutter on them or a wire cutter and some pliers, whichever you have handy. And you're gonna cut off the excess at the end. Now, you may have to do some fancy maneuvering to get to the place that you wanna cut it. Um, that's what I had to do for this particular notebook. Um, but once you get the angle right, it's not that hard to just put a little bit of pressure on it and snap the wire and then the rest of it will come off and you can discard the excess stuff. The point where you cut it is going to be kind of sharp, so don't poke your finger on it. Um, but that's also why you want pliers because you're going to have to bend it in one to keep things from uh, uncoiling the way you just coiled it in but also to keep you from pricking your finger. So you're gonna take the pliers and you're going to start bending things um, back towards you. And I tried to slow this portion down so that you can see me bending it in. Um, it's not too terribly complicated, but I found that because the wire is kind of stuck in this spiral shape, um, when you start bending while it's flexible, it will still start to kind of spiral in. Um, it won't just be straight perpendicular to the coil like you want it to. So you'll kind of have to massage it and manipulate it. You might have to pull it in different directions. So you're going to bend it back, but then you might have to um, bend it forward or push it back to make it lay flat uh, the way you want it to but you're gonna do that on both ends. And then once you do that, you're completely finished and you have a notebook that you can use. So thank you for joining me as I created one of my notebooks. Um, I hope that you picked up some tips that will help you in your notebook creating process. Let me know in the comments if you have any um, helpful suggestions for me that would make my process easier. Um, or the things that you like to do, or if you have questions, something that maybe I didn't cover within the video, let me know in the comment section um, so that I can go back in and uh, help with those types of things. This is my final notebook um, after I finished everything, and it took me a little under an hour to put this together, which is not bad. Um, it's pretty cost efficient, and I love it because it's it's custom just for me and it's one of a kind nobody else has a notebook that looks like this 
um, unless you guys copy it and do it too, which is a-okay. If you do, tag me, I wanna see it, and I will like and share and love it as well. Um, but yeah, if you definitely want something that's unique to you, this is an option. I will see you guys next time. Have a great day and a great week, and happy journaling.